So team, welcome. Welcome to the day one for the new QTP batch. This is the September 22nd the training batch for the basic and advanced QTP. Thank you for being here. And uh, before I get started, very quick introduction about the go-to training tool that you are all participating. Each of you have been muted. Uh, you are either listening to me uh, using your headset or your telephone. So at the moment, I have muted everyone and I'm the one speaking. As the session progresses and you are unable to hear me, you can raise your hand uh, or you try and follow this process that is displayed here. Since there is a large participation, I will not be able to take a constant look at your chat messages and you need to follow the instructions that you're seeing here to be able to help yourself with the audio just in case you cannot hear me. If you used your telephone, then make sure that you enter the pin on the telephone to be able to have the option to speak if needed at a later point. As the session progresses team, you can use your hand uh, icon in the go-to training to raise your hand and say that, hey, listen, I have a question. Uh, can you take the question? The most preferred way to ask a question would be to put it in the chat initially. And then if it's still not clear uh, what as to what if can if I can understand what you're saying, then I can have you unmuted. You can speak your question. But the first option would be to use the chat which is inbuilt within the go-to training. All right, team, having said that, welcome to this uh, the day one session. My focus is thoroughly going to be on learning HP Quick Test Professional as a tool. So I'm not going to spend time any time around the training, what it is, and so on. But basically, you can always go to qtpelearn.com to look at what uh, the course content is, uh, the different details and everything about it. If you have a question, feel free to write to sales.elearn at gmail.com and one of us will be able to help you out. All right. So team, uh, one of the things that you will get as part of the uh, whole training program is either you are attending these live sessions as they happen, but each of you will definitely have the access to the recorded version of every live class that will happen going forward uh, in this batch for all the confirmed participants and all these videos are going to be hosted in a specific folder which you'll be given access to later uh, in screencast. Now, if you just go to this URL, you won't find any videos there. You have to be, give, be provided access. So in this, you will see there are uh, lots of videos. There are class scripts uh, on various batches that have uh, happened off late. And there are also different pre-recorded videos. Uh, some are on VBScript basics, data-driven framework, arrays, keyword-driven, hybrid question and answer sessions, um, and basically last class about interviews and how to handle projects. Then there are other topics like uh, on each of them like actions, uh, uh, automation object model, everything. So almost all the topics are covered. In total team, we will have close to about 15 to 17 live sessions, which is the focus of VB scripting and automation frameworks. And then you have to combine these, whatever we do, along with some of these pre-recorded topics, uh, around 30 to 35 sessions in total would complete the entire training package. So even if you're attending live, there are some pre-recorded videos that you need to watch. What to watch, when to watch, as the day progresses, as the sessions happen, I will keep guiding you further on them. All right? Now. Uh, Having said this, team, this all this will be part of your welcome pack when uh, once your confirmation is through and you've joined. Now, at the moment, let's get started very quickly with uh, learning HP Quick Test Professional. All right, no more uh, theory about anything else around this area. So, here is what I'm going to do, team. I am going to launch up QTP at the background and let it take some time. Each of you will be provided with a trial version link that you could download for QTP 10. You could either use QTP 10 or QTP 11. Either one is fine. Any questions regarding uh, what to do with when you face challenges and all that, you will uh, be part of a private Google group. There are already about 900 members in the last one and a half, two years who have attended this training program, uh, already members in there. It's a highly interactive community. You will be part of it. Your questions will get answered through that channel. All right. So uh, there's a lot of material, ebooks, content, uh, interview questions and there's a whole plethora of information that uh, you could find in that group so sorry I muted myself for a second so basically team I do not wish to talk about QTP on a theoretical level as a tool what it does what features it has and so on 
I do not believe in definitions. I do not believe in theory. I believe in trying to learn things um, in a very practical manner. So here is the way we're going to start. I want to take an application, show you that application, and say how is it that we do manual testing to start with, and then why QTP, how does it help us uh, better do our testing job, and why is it so much in demand today in the market? All right. So let's jump straight into it. What I'm going to do for this session as an example is I've prepared a very brief plan on an application called Edmunds.com. This is a more like an auto loan uh, uh, company and you would see a lot of features in there which we could evaluate, right? So let's assume for a second that you have joined a new testing uh, opportunity you've taken up and you are now working for a company which is called Edmunds.com. You are now part of a group or a sub-team within Edmunds which is specifically focusing on the calculator tools, which is constantly building it, uh, customizing it, enhancing the features for it, making it more uh, customer friendly. So this application constantly goes through changes every time. So very important uh, as part of the changes that the development team makes on the applications that you are part of is to test that every time something happens on the application as a change if the functionality of the application is correct uh, in the sense that what is expected out of every specific uh, functionality or a module for example auto calculators is a module within Edmunds is it working correctly so what do I mean what I mean is let's say that a user comes in and this is how we are looking at it as a manual testers uh, and says that he or she would like to see what is to be done to find out what is their ideal price range for buying a car, depending on what they could effort. Okay, let's talk about this as one scenario at the moment. How much can the user spend monthly? That is the first thing that we are looking at. And let's say the user is willing to spend about $300 a month. That's the current bandwidth that he or she is willing to spend on it. And then the user is going to click on go. So what I'm showing you is the navigation which is part of your functionality. You as part of this testing team belonging to this project need to be a master and expert at how this whole functionality works. You need to know exactly what it does, where it does and so on. Once you've entered the ideal price range, your monthly commitment that you could put, you are entering your zip code. Depending on the zip code that you enter, your uh, market finance may get calculated what's going to be a rate around the area that you live all right this is already the amount that we entered in the last page and then when we clicked on go we came to this page which is giving us further details on what to do okay now the user has entered zip code updated it and now he or she can select a, a tenure let's say that he's a little optimistic and he says he wants to close it in 36 months instead of stretching it across but what does that mean? What it means is when we calculate, it is going to take a combination of all of these values to arrive at what could be the budget overall. What kind of a car or vehicle is this user eligible or will fall in the total budget for him, right? So let's say that we stick with 60 months, just as an example. And the third option here is what is it that do I already have a car that I think I can trade it in and let's say the dealership is ready to pay about $2,000 for my current vehicle which is a little old one okay and I don't own anything as a trade-in on that so that's as is at zero so I leave we leave this at zero and we have handy cash of about let's $3,500 that we want to spend at the end what the user is going to do is click on the calculate button all right. So when we click on the calculate button, what you would see is that after a few seconds of wait, the total down payment that we have decided to put in, which is like 5500 and what we're getting for the old car, and what can be my total price range for my vehicle based on what I've entered is this value. Depending on that, I can then get as to what fits into that segment. A little under if I want to be conservative, a little over if I want to be a little optimistic and go a little over my budget. What kind of a vehicles would fall? So here is a simple functionality. Now, what is your role? Your role is to be number one a master at this, 
whenever the application goes through a change, and let's say uh, as part of this next steps, and they come up with a new feature which is hottest deal for this, buy now, today only kind of an offer. Just giving an example. At that time, what happens? The developers are working on this new functionality. They're changing this page to uh, get that fixed in. While doing that, anything could have gone wrong. This could have got corrupted. This is starting to show something different from what is expected. Uh, there's so many other things uh, or web services happening in the background which is not giving you the current results and so on. Now it is your duty to see after the development has completed the job to test before the end users start to use. Make sure that there is an error free to the maximum possible uh, product or a service which is going to the end user. All right. Now that's the intent team. Very quickly, the reason I focus so much on the functionality is end of the day, you and I, if we if we are never great automation or so even manual test engineers, we don't know the functionality well, right? Now, whatever we have planned to do, let's say that I have put that as a high level in terms of what are the steps. So typically, how do you then test this application? You're going to open the browser. You will go to that specific application URL, which belongs to your functional area. You will start to enter the values into the application. Then you click on the calculate go button on first page, uh, or rather, let's say that uh, process process the applic loan application. Okay. Then we'll capture the results. All right, finally, we're going to capture the results. We will compare the result and finally close the browser. This is at a very, very high level, a very simple uh, presentation of what we would do as manual test engineers, right? So if I document this and let's say you have a new person joining in your team who's just joined and she would like to perform what exactly you're doing, then you can share this sheet with that uh, new uh, uh, your peer who's joined in and they are able to understand at a high level what needs to be done. You've given them an overview and said that these are the steps, please follow it, right? Now what tends to be very important is, cool, I can enter values, but do you want me to enter specific values? Can I go into monthly payment that I'm efforting and say that 5, is, is that a correct value? Or let's say, uh, how about uh, 35,000, is that a correct value? or are they out of range? So you need to be able to define that, great, yes, we want to test this, but there is a range of values. Let's say we start with 200 as my monthly payment, okay? And then each time I increase this by, let's say, about 25. Why am I changing these values? I want to see if I am the owner as a QA analyst for this application, um, is my application stable for every different type of user? Different users may come in, they may enter different types of numbers, combinations of zip codes and interest rates and so on. And is the application still working? So trying to change your parameters or the data which is driving this test is going to decide in the long run. We will go to something called as a data-driven automation framework in gradually in the next few sessions. But for today, we are not talking about QTP yet. We are going to get to into it very shortly.